Hi friends, how are we doing? Yes, it's Art Journal Monday. How are you? Now, I'm not in my usual place, am I? No, I'm at the Create Craft Studios today. So I've just popped into a little meeting room and we're going to do our art journal here. It is still very sticky, very warm. I hope you join me this morning for the brand new Sally Anson USB. It's amazing, absolutely gorgeous. Awesome. I am going to play a little bit of that element in with this as well. So, art journal. I was so pleased everyone really loved my artwork we're doing last um, week. Hi Jo, hope you're doing really well. So this week, see thing. So we can really get to town with all of those inks and beautiful ideas. I'm also going to do a little bit of ink work using the beautiful uh, impregnated watercolour tissue paper. You can buy it online, it's so cool to use and it's very, very different. So I'm just going to turn you around so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Now I am back live on your telly box as well at quarter past five, so I hope you can join me then. But let's have a look at what I'm going to do today. So I'm going to start with my plain journal. Here we go. Now, like I said before, I'm not in my home studio. I'm actually at the studios today <coughs> at Crane Craft. So obviously things are going to be a little bit different. So this is the watercolour tissue paper. It's beautiful. It's just your usual tissue paper. But as soon as you add water to it, what happens is the colour just flows out. So I'm just going to rip some random little bits, different layers, different shapes, different sizes. And I've got the yellow, the darker blue, and then I have two different, three, sorry, different types of green. Then I've got a little splash of the darker blue uh, bordering on purple. So I'm just going to have two pieces of that as well. We're also going to be doing some paintwork and some inwork and a tiny little bit of stamping as well. Okay, so first things first, using this, I'm just going to add a little bit of water to my pages. Now this is just a usual square dot journal. And what you can do is, if you're not happy with the thickness of the pages, if you can't take what you're creating, the best thing to do is just tape a few together. This will just make it a lot more sturdier a lot more um, easier to use. So I'm just going to add some layers. Now you can see already some of it has started sticking, some of it hasn't. But I just need to get some positioning on here first. So I'm just going to lay this across here. Hopefully you can see where I am with this. And a little bit of the green at the bottom. Now I'm going to go onto a piece of paper because if you've used the tissue, you know that the actual ink seeps a lot. Okay, so now I'm just going to use my water spray to go over the top of them very, very simply. Okay. And on this side too. So as that water reacts with that, what's going to happen is two different things. The first thing is the colour is going to become a lot brighter. And don't forget as well, Every time you use watercolour, what happens is it actually dries two to three shades lighter. So um, always remember that. I'm just making space this side so I've got somewhere to put my tissue paper once I've finished using it. Okay, so now this is here like this. I'm just going to grab a piece. Actually, I'm just going to grab my wet brush. And I'm going to exaggerate some of that colour out. Can you see that? Just like so. So we've got the greens and the blues. There's some more water down here. And of course what happens is bits that it hasn't touched you won't get any colour. And of course the bits you have you will get lots of vibrant colour. Absolutely gorgeous. So again I'm just exaggerating them colours from the tissue paper. Very simple. I'm just making sure that I've got good coverage and the colours. Okay. Now you can leave this to dry and then peel it off after, but what I like to do is just take it off straight away. Beautiful. So now I'm going to go in with my wet brush 
and I'm going to exaggerate that colour out slightly. Can you see that? Allow it to dry. Basically, it goes. Also, it gives you these beautiful effects on the paper. And then again, go right down. Check it out in a moment. Now, if you haven't got this, of course you can use normal ink or you can use um, uh, just paint if you like as well. I am going to be doing a little bit of painting over the top of this. At the moment, I just want to get that base colour on. And now again, saturate that colour out with a little piece of water. I think you can see that with this. And you can see how simple it is to be able to blow that colour out beautifully. There we go. So already I have my base of my colour. Next I'm going to go on to my Himmy palette. I hope you got yours. They will be back in stock soon, so please don't worry. I'm just going to start with my larger round brush. I'm going to pick up this lightest blue and I'm just going to start adding a bit more colour on the edges. Can you see that? Allow it to run as well if it wants to. Pick up a little bit of a darker blue now. This is more like a, a purpley blue. It's got them violet tones in. Then I've got the true sort of navy blue that I'm adding in there as well. Now when you come over to the green, add the blue and if you do it in sort of swirls, that's the only way I can sort of describe it, is you're swirling it into the colours that are behind. Just I'm sorry if you can hear the air conditioning unit really that's on, but it is hot today. I'm just going to turn this round slightly so I can work on this area now. Again, I'm going into my lightest blue. Just tap, 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 tap it in. And then just pull it away. So you tap, tap to saturate the paper. And then you blend it in. Okay. And now I'm going to go into that. Another blue. Tap, tap, tap. A little bit of water. Okay. So I'm going to go in a little bit green here. This is sort of quite a mossy green, but it works really, really well. So tap, tap, tap. And this will create all the different layers, all the different textures that you need for under the sea. So I'll just turn this round, I hope you can see where I am. Now it depends, if you want more realistic, obviously you need to do your ombre, which would be darker at the bottom and lighter at the top. Um, but I prefer to go more, more sort of a fantasy style, if you like. I'm just pulling some of this colour around, just using that round brush to build up that colour. A little bit of green, just to give it multiple layers of colour. So while that's drying, I'll just pop that to the side for a second because I very naughtily forgot to bring my heat down. But it's alright, it won't take long. It's so warm in here. It will very easily dry. Okay, next item we're going to be using is the beautiful Himmy pencils. Now these are gorgeous. Not only are they watercolour pencils, but they're quite creamy in a sort of oily way, which is beautiful because then it just gives you a lot more adaptation of what you want to do. Now, I've already cut out, these are the beautiful seahorses. This is the charisma that I've printed 
in black and white. So you can print them in grayscale if you like and just use that as your colour option. So now I'm going to go in with my lightest green and I'm just building up some of that colour work very, very simply. So we come in, just building up the layers. I'm going to go into a light blue now. This is one of my favourite things to do. It's simply gorgeous, really, really, really. absolutely beautiful. I'm going to come down now the opposing way. I always tend to colour the direction that I'm doing because then also what that does is it makes it slightly 3D. So I'm just pulling it across. Can you see that? This won't be part of that, that will be part of the reef that it's holding on to. So now I'm coming down, adding that little bit of touch of colour. Like so. Gold in there as well, especially around the eyes. And you can overlay, this is what I really love doing, is overlaying the colours. Of course, because they're water soluble as well, we can easily use our brush to blend these after. And I've got the tails, it coils around. darker blue now and this will create texture as well as colour and just put in that background just slightly highlighting the edges as I go <coughs> excuse me I don't know if we're going to have any more rain today, you know. I'm looking out thinking, I'm just going to use a little tad of purple just to highlight some of this colour slightly, especially on the face. And just a little tad. And now this is where the fun starts because even though we've used the exquisite Sally Anson designed um, Charisma, putting it in the grayscale means that now. I can colour this any colour I want. So if you want orange seahorses, you can. If you want blue or green or yellow or whatever colour you prefer. So I'm just putting a little bit more of that colour that you can see there. Okay. So now I'm going to go in with one of my smaller brushes. Front, pick up a tad of water, and then I literally just blend in around as we go. We're not taking any of the colour away, we're not lifting it at all, we are purely blending that colour detail as we go along. So again, blend. And we've got that shading already done. And don't forget we get darker areas as it wraps itself around. And we'll come back to the next one. Just using that water. So I just want a little bit more purple detail, so I'm just going to pop this straight down into my car stop, add a little water, pick up that colour, make sure it's not too wet, so twist the brush, and then just highlighting them in. Now we'll take 
point my orange is yellow, and I'm going to come straight down into this seagrass that it's holding on to. So we'll pop him to a side, or then, shall we say, to a side for a second, and we will carry on doing our background. So let's have a look where we are with this. Now it's not completely 100% dry, but it is dry. So I'm going to take some mauve lawn distress oxide, and I'm going to be using the bubbles that are from the Inkily range. If you've seen the stamps with the beautiful pens. And basically, I'm just going to do some random stamping with these two. It doesn't have to be exact. Try and rotate it so it looks a bit different. If you haven't got these stamps, don't worry. Get yourself a cup, okay? A, a, a beaker of some sort. Use the bottom of the beaker as your bubbles. Okay, so if you haven't got bubble stamps, don't worry for now. You know, I'm sure they'll be part of your investment eventually because they are so cute. But you can use that cup edge out as well. So I'm just going to take the other bubbles that I've been using and just pop these in here and there. And the reason I'm opening it is because my book is so full now that um, I really need to open the pages to get to the point if you know what I mean. Okay, so there's my bubbles and I've done them in the mode line. Next what I'm going to do is again I'm going to go back to my Hemi palette and I'm going to pick up a little touch of this perfect beautiful milkshake colour. It's gorgeous. It's that pink milkshake. It just makes you think of strawberry milkshake, right? And I'm going straight over. I start from the centre and you just build that colour up one side. It just makes it three-dimensional. Very easy. I hope you can see where I am. Should I move it over a bit? There we go. So we're just using that Beautiful pink. Now, as you know, a bit stickler for this, I don't know why, but I always end up doing my colours in layers rather than going along as a wave, you know what I mean? So I'm just going to be adding that beautiful milkshake pink just to the left hand side. And here, I'm just going to add that. And I'm not adding any other colour to this pink, I'm using it straight from the palette. So next we go into your lightest blue that you have. If you want to take it down an increment, you can. So simply just add it to your palette, either add off-white or, or this is like a sort of um, off-white that I'm adding here. So it will just bring it down a couple of shades. Now I've got quite a wet brush but I'm still going to go over the pink. So you go over the pink but then also side by side on the pink as well. So now let's pull this around. Can you see that? And it just gives it great definition. Don't worry if it blends together. That's fine. I don't know why, it's just saying it's so lovely about doing bubbles. It's beautiful. So I'm coming over here now with the blue. I'm just going to colour on my brush to blend it through as I go. Blue. 
see that? So now I'm just grabbing that blade and I'm blending it down. Okay, going to the point and then we blend it down. Next one, yellow. But what I'm going to do is fill my brush with this yellow and then I'm going to go slightly into that blue that we mixed in already because then this will just be perfect. So you want to make it quite watery because you don't want it to be too stark in the background. It's a bit too stark, just use your water to blend it through. And there we go. And you just pick up the other side from the end of it. So you can take that colour and Now I'm in the green room today and we have Mel in there, we have Stephanie, I do believe they're launching the Sarah Lou collection today, which is exquisite, I've already looked at that. We've got my little Hells, bless her, she's in with Paper Boutique, I'm threatening to take her out on a picnic, I think we should, you know. So, there we go. Let me just check. I've got enough colour in there. Perfect. Right, lovely. So, that's my little thing done. So, I'll just have a quick look to tidy up. Then, I'm going to go over to use a few stencils. Now, I've got some really cool stencils lately. Um, these are quite different, quite unique, but I just feel that they just give you that extra edge. I'm going to go in with my Distress Oxides. Let me check what I've got. Um, or Distress Inks, whatever you've got really. Um, Now you should really take this down a little bit more to go straight on. And I'll just that layering effect. So now I'm going to pick up that distress oxide. Not too much. And I'm not doing the whole of the um, stencil either. What I'm actually doing is just cherry picking key elements that I would like to use. Now when I pull that up. I've got that sort of semi-fish scale thread. So again, I'm going to come down here. Just use that quite sporadically in different areas. Beautiful. I'm going to come right up to this corner. And then here it is. just going to grab my wet brush. Yes, you will get blue fingers doing this, but it's fun. It's too much fun to not do. Just find a little bit of wet uh, flicking on there, wet brush. Very, very simple. Now, when this dries, it will be beautiful. And I'm going to add in that gorgeous little seahorse that we've created. Let's check if I've got some glue. Lovely. So I'm just going to use some glue here on top of that. Just like so. Love 
gloves. I've got a few sort of MAC gems, which are just right for this actually. They really are. It's just enough to pull it together. Just that. So you've still got the bubble detail in the background. But just a few little random gems. Now the gems that I'm using are stamped by me as well, so pop along to their website, have a little look. And we are done. There we go. Now you could add a sentiment to this if you want, or you can leave it at photos. I'm gonna have a look at my stickers I've got some beautiful sentiment stickers. And I would like to add something. So let's have a look what we've got here. Oh, very kind hearted. Yes, yes, yes. And what I'm doing is I'm actually going to place the sentiments just off the bubbles so it just ties everything together. So let's have a look what else we've got here. I've had a lovely time, this one says. Yes, I have had a lovely time. Um, oh, memory to hold. Now these are Tim Holtz uh, stickers, sentiment stickers, available on the website if you would like to go and have a look and okay, in my dreams. So I think we, maybe we need one more sentiment just for balance at the bottom here and then I think we are done. So this one says, perfectly happy. There we go. There we go. Hey friends, how are we doing? Are you okay? Lovely and a bit different, isn't it? Thank you, so. I'm so glad. Right, okay, let's have a little look. I will post pictures later once it's completely dry so you'll be able to see it in gorgeous close-ups. But can you see how unique and different it is? Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoy Art Journal Monday. Please feel free to share all of your gorgeous artwork on the group, um, either the Crafty Army or post them on my page. I'll be more than happy to see them. I'll be back on your telly box at quarter past five this evening with the next instalment of Sally Anson. Now, guess what, friends? Tomorrow is the Amala Facebook Live. Uh, no, not tomorrow, Wednesday. Because tomorrow, oh, I'm going to be the mother of a 16-year-old. Oh, I can't believe it. Um, yes, my little Lottie is going to be 16 tomorrow, so yeah. I'll mostly be in the cave all day. Because it is my birthing day, isn't it? I gave birth to her on that day. So, um, and then also on Thursday, I'm going to be back on your TV screens with the brand new Craft You Print collection. So if you've got the last one, you know the 50 cheats. With all that beautiful artwork, um, we're doing another one. Oh yeah, amazing, brand new images, something totally different. So I hope you can join me, take care of yourself, and of course, I will be showing you the dry variation once this is done. Take care of yourself and each other, my friends, and I will see you soon. Don't worry, Sue, if you miss me, Catch up. I'm on YouTube. Don't you worry, sweetheart. See you later. Take care. Stay cool.